I'm Surf with Spadone, representing the Surf Channel here today, and I'm sitting here at Lowers Trestles with Lindsay Jacob Ellis. Lindsay, what brought you here today? Uh, well, I couldn't really pass up an opportunity to surf lowers with some of the top athletes in the world and only a few of them out there, so I'm there. I'm super excited to get out there and uh, experience something on a whole nother level. And this is actually a really special something. It's welcoming USA Surfing into the Olympics, right? It is, and it would probably be, you know, not as common for me to be giving surfers advice surfing, so any advice that I could give them for being a potential Olympian and having that moment and uh, that experience in life would be pretty cool and it's just another commonality to have within another athlete and especially all the top females, it's, it's incredible to be out there in the water with them and, and be having so much fun. And two of the top females here today, Courtney Conlog and Caroline Marks. Have you talked to them today? I have. I was actually spending some time with Court, and every time I run into Caroline, it's usually down here at Lowers. Um, she's always so nice and bubbly, and so it's very easy to talk to her. And I've, you know, always had fun surfing around her, and you know, she's always having so much fun in the water. So it's she's a very per easy person to go up to and just start having a conversation with, and it's great seeing these girls out here rip. So you grew up in Connecticut, is that correct? Yes, I grew up in Connecticut and then spent a lot of time in Vermont because I went to a specialty school that would help me balance my athletic and academic lifestyle to help me pursue snowboarding as best I could and see how far it could take me. And I'm still doing it today. I, I really didn't think it was going to last this long, but uh, 20 years later, I'm still competing in snowboarding. Um, but what has helped with that movement so much has been surfing. To be able to step away from that really intense competitive lifestyle and always be chasing snow and that cold weather just going from winter to winter, I decided I needed that time in the summer to be warm, to let my body heal, to be out in the water and surf and you know still have a feeling like I'm on a board and you know riding powder. But um, it's, it's been great to see myself develop over the time, be more and more comfortable in the water because I grew up in pools and not learning how to read, you know, you know, rips and use them instead of fighting them or seeing how swells coming in and moving. So it's been a great learning experience and anytime an athlete wants to transition into something else, if they like it enough, they're obviously very passionate, we always find ways to excel or get better at it and you know it's that drive that transfers over that we all have. So growing up in Connecticut there is a beach there. Do you have a favorite break in Connecticut? I don't think I've ever surfed in Connecticut. No, I would maybe drive to Rhode Island. Okay. Uh, we go to like Point Judith maybe or Narragansett is like kind of the nice this beach that we would try to go to for families, but that was back when we were super young, we boogie boards, so I really only surfed those areas maybe a handful of times, um, and then just started traveling the world and started bringing a surfboard with my snowboard stuff, so if we were kind of in the vicinity, we'd kind of jump into that whole world and try that out, so there's been a couple of, of occasions we've been down in New Zealand, and on my way back, it's like, well, when are you going to find yourself all the way down here again? Let's stop at Fiji and check out Cloud Break. So I've been pretty... What a lifestyle, I've, by the way. <laughs> I've been pretty fortunate to be ex able to experience so much with my sport in snowboarding. It's given me so much. So, you know, I now look to see how I can give back in any way. So I love coming to, you know, surf events and seeing all these younger girls coming up and rising into it and started working with ASA Entertainment with Supergirl and do some work with them with announcing and, you know, building that whole energy around it because I see how much the camaraderie and just the growth of the sport, especially on the women's side, has been just growing exponentially year after year. And what I really, really wanted to see was if it was possible to bring that same dynamic into snowboard cross. So this past March, we had Supergirl Snow in Big Bear. And it was so much fun because we made it more of a mentoring program where we had like 16 of the top pros interacting and riding with these like girls that were as young as six and, you know, old, you know, as like mid 20s and, you know, just having a great time and remembering why we love the sport what the sport has given us we've all been in those positions where we're able to look up to somebody that we truly admire so that was just the vibe and the drive that I was going to to bring that 
uh, you know, dream to life, and it was so incredible to be there. So I, I had, you know, a blast, and it was always these tearful moments when it finally came together because it was the first time I'd really been on the other side of producing an event and really seeing what goes into it. And I tell you, all the times I complained about certain events, I take it back because it's very challenging <laughs> to organize everything. It's like herding cats. Nothing goes right. <laughs> and you've been competing almost all your life, 10 times in the X Games and always dominating the s snowboard cross. My question to you is, that's all about racing and speed, a lot of competitive nature. How is that going to translate in the water here today? And how does it translate into the water normally for you? Well, normally when I'm at lowers, there's like 50 people out. So I have to get aggressive and definitely scrap and, and earn my place in the lineup. So I just don't get, you know, walked all over and, you know, basically saying I have a right to be here and I'm, I'm fighting Look for waves. Ring, I promise I have a right to be here. <laughs> you know, and, you know, I'm trying my best and I'm learning. Um, so it, it's pretty incredible. So now when you're in a heat, uh -huh. you know, definitely having that knowledge of, even though I have no idea what I'm doing when I'm trying to select waves or understanding priority, that was the first thing I learned down in Cabo, um, it was basically just keeping myself calm. And that's where I feel like I have a lot of experience with because I've just been in this world for a really long time of just putting yourself through the gnarliest mental game you could possibly get. So, you know, I felt great. So today you're going to go into it just trying to have fun, no competitive edge? Uh, there's always a competitive edge. I'm, I'm definitely going to be shadowing Caroline and Courtney. And, <laughs> and Learning the ropes a little bit? Exactly, you know, shadowing them, maybe try to bait them into a wave. I don't know. <laughs> well, this is going to be their first time into the Olympic sport. And when we began, you were saying that you would like to give them some word of advice. What would that word of advice be? My best advice would be go out and enjoy every moment. It's such a huge accomplishment and a great opportunity to be representing your nation, to be walking in at opening ceremonies. It's, there's nothing like it. You feel so silly when you're dressed in that outfit all by yourself because you, everything has to be tailored and everything has to be fit just right on you. Some Ralph Lauren. Yeah, that, that whole process where you're getting every outfit, is it's so overwhelming, but it's really cool. And then when you finally walk out and you're with everyone that's in the same outfit, you don't feel so silly and you're like, this is so incredibly awesome when you walk out under, you know, the USA flag. It's, it's always what I remember. And, you know, everything else you can definitely get caught up with. You know, the intense, you know, the pressure, the expectations of yourself, but remembering, you know, who you are, what you are, what you're passionate about, and, you know, why you're doing this. It's, you know, very few people get to experience something like that, and it's pretty special. And, and surfing, welcome to the Olympic sport and the Olympic stage. Uh, thank you very much, Lindsay Jacob Ellis, for joining us here today at the Surf Channel, and I really appreciate it, and good luck out there in the water today. I'm Lindsay Jacob Bellis, 10-time X Game Gold medalist, and you're watching the Surf Channel.